Oops, sorry. In three, two. Good afternoon. My name is Rod McMillian. I now call to order the April 19th, 2022 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at the discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting otherwise. All committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's audit committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items in this afternoon will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting the discussion on agenda item. As courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Hen. Present. Ms. Rowe. Mr. McMillian. Present. Thank you. A quorum being present, where we begin. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens. Present. Ms. Manna. Present. Mr. Fletcher. Present. Mr. Strait. Ms. Sample. Mr. Spore. Present. Mr. Edwards. Present. Mr. Hartlow. Present. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Ms. Jamison. Item number two, approval of minutes. The live video footage of our last meeting represents the minutes of the meeting. The meeting, the minutes stand approved as recorded. Item number three, new business, Office of Internal Audit, FY22 Activity Report, quarter three. Ms. Barr, please proceed with the activity report. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are going to present our quarter three update that provides cumulative information about our office's activities from the beginning of the year, July 1 through the third quarter, March 31, 2022. So this will include any audit reports that we've issued during this period, the status of current audit projects, and a list of planned audits not yet started. And just some reminders for the committee members, um, start and completions for each audit project is an estimate because future circumstances could delay project begin dates and report issuance dates. So sometimes we run into delays in receiving data or information for review. Sometimes the number and nature of the findings that we have require further evaluation. And sometimes we have to have um, multiple discussions with management or the auditee to make sure that um, our findings are valid and the recommendations that we make are needed. Also, um, as we progress through the completion of the entity-wide risk assessment, we've had to reprioritize some of the projects, shift some of the projects, um, and even cancel some of the projects based on what we're learning through the risk assessment. So some of those um, project start and end dates have been revised or they've just been um, eliminated from the completion of the plan for this year. And also as a reminder, all of our audit reports are posted to our website. Um, our quarter three reports need to be sent to the appropriate individuals for review to make sure that they are okay to be posted. The investigation reports for um, Q1 and Q2 have been approved and will be uh, uploaded and provided to board members uh, by the end of this week. And as you know, um, we, are a, we provide regular project updates at each, at each audit committee meeting, and we're happy to respond to any questions that you may have at any time throughout the year related to our audit activities. Um, and also, we put PowerPoint presentations out on board docs that provide more detailed or specific information for our projects. And also, as you're aware, we do issue our um, reports related to the fraud, waste, and abuse hotline under separate cover. So what I'd like to do now is to go through each of our audit activities 
that were identified in our work plan and explain what has been completed. And I will be referring to the appropriate member of our executive leadership team throughout the presentation. So we'll start off with Mr. Fletcher, who will provide um, his Q3 update related to the fraud, waste and abuse hotline. Mr. Fletcher. Thank you, Ms. Barr, and I'm going to pull up the quarter three report now. Which I believe everyone should be able to see, correct? Yes. OK, excellent. Thank you. And keep in mind, this document is on board docs. Uh, so if if I know it's it's kind of small when we share it, but if you do have any questions, the actual document is out on board docs, uh, but just uh, as we go through, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, so this report of uh, the investigative unit is as of March 31st. Uh, which is nine months or three quarters of the way through the fiscal year, FY22. And the report will discuss year to date investigation activities through the end of the third quarter. So it will include cases that were open as of the end of the previous fiscal year, as well as any new cases that were also that were received during uh, the current fiscal year. So as we scroll through, I'm sorry, as we get down into our, our uh, first table here, this shows us the quarterly breakdown of cases that were, have been received as of March 31st. Um, so year to date, we have received 80 cases. Uh, 30, as you can see, have been kept by internal audit for investigation. And the classification of those cases are here. And then 10 were sent to BCPS management to investigate and provide a response. And 40 were outside of the purview of the hotline and were closed with a memo to file. And so as we scroll through down into table two, this actually shows us that there were 47 cases open um, at the beginning of the fiscal year. So at June 30, 2021, there were there were 47 cases open. And so once you add in the 80 uh, that have been received thus far. Uh, through fiscal year 22, that gives us 127 cases total that were open at some point throughout this current fiscal year. <clears throat> and so the top part of this table uh, shows that here we are. Here we go. Um, of those cases, 42 uh, of those were kept by internal audit for investigation. 12 were then sent to BCPS management to investigate and provide a response back. And 73 were actually closed um, with memo to file since they were outside the purview of the hotline. Now, the bottom part of this table shows that, again, talking about the investigations kept by internal audit. So of the 42, 38 have been closed. Uh, four remain open as of March 31st. And then 10 of the 12 cases that were sent to BCPS management um, have been closed. Only two remain open. And then 72 of the 73 cases that were outside of the purview of the hotline have been closed with a memo to file, and only the one remains open. Now, the rest of this document, uh, Table 3, actually documents all 42 of these cases that were kept by the um, investigations kept by the Office of Internal Audit. And then Table 4 is going to be the 12 cases related to management investigations. And then table five will be the 73 um, cases for that were closed with memo to file. And so all of those details are here um, in these additional tables and are available for you to to go through and, and read through if you have any um, uh, particular questions or anything like that. And that, Ms. Barr, is the end of our report. Any discussion on this report? Ms. Hen? Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I think Mr. Fletcher answered my question, um, and that was about the memo to file, and it looks like those are summarized in Table 5. So thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Absolutely. And Ms. Rose attempting, she's on a call, and she's attempting to get access to be able to speak. There's some complication with that. 
Uh, I don't have any further comments myself. OK, should we proceed, Mr. McMillian? Yes, please. OK, thank you. Next, we have um, an update related to our entity wide risk assessment. And for that, I will call on Ms. Mana for her presentation. I believe Mr. Corns will assist her with the PowerPoint. Thank you, Ms. Barr. And I believe Mr. Corns is going to um, display the PowerPoint presentation it is also attached to board docs as well. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide, though, please. OK, so our risk assessment update. Um, the overall purpose, again, is uh, for the risk assessment is to identify, analyze and evaluate any hazards or situations that may negatively affect an organization. Um, a risk assessment is also known as a method used to identify weaknesses in an organization which might prevent an office or a department from achieving its goals and objectives. To do this, we first identified all key business functions and processes in the organization and discuss potential risks with selected management personnel. The end result of conducting our risk assessment will help our office prioritize our resources and focus on the areas of greatest risk. Next slide, please. <clears throat> this slide shows an overall process um, of our the risk assessment process. We met with all chiefs and then um, executive directors and selected management personnel of all divisions, departments and offices to learn more about the office level objectives and functions and their potential risks. We sent surveys out to board, at, board of ed members and the superintendent to solicit input and feedback related to the risks within BCPS. This step is in line with the Red Book, which is required and it's a critical part of this process as the results will be used to complete our scoring for all BCPS risk ratings. When we met with management, we facilitated the identification of risks and areas of concern within their department or office. And after meeting with management, we sent them a risk scorecard of their, their identified key business functions and had management rate the level of risks for predetermined criteria for each of the key functions. Then our risk assessment team within internal audit evaluated their ratings and we used our knowledge from prior audit projects and prior audit engagements and, and experiences to finalize the risk scores. Next slide, please. The tasks on this slide are actually uh, still in process in our office. We're currently evaluating the outcomes and rankings of the auditable universe within the audit uh, risk scores. The audit universe is all of the business uh, key business functions for the entire organization. We will then use these outcomes to identify and prioritize the high risk areas, and these results will be the basis for our future audit plans, especially for fiscal year, fiscal year 23 and 24. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Our risk assessment team held over 60 meetings with more than 100 uh, personnel of chiefs, executive directors, and management level personnel to complete our risk assessment process. During these meetings with management, our objectives were to discuss the department and office objectives and their potential risks, determine the department's office key business functions, and to review the, the uh, risk factors, its definitions, and to review the process to complete the risk scorecard for their area. OK, next slide, please. So this slide shows um, three of the six identified uh, risk factor areas that internal audit determined to be uh, the score scoring method in each off to score each department's um, or office's key business functions against. So these first three on this slide are mission critical, regulations, and change in people or systems. And the definitions for these uh, risk factors are also listed here. Next slide, please. <clears throat> this slide shows the other three risk factors, which are complexity, prior audits or observations, and control environment. And the definitions for these risk factors are also listed. Once the key business uh, uh, processes were identified, Management used the risk factor definitions 
to rate each of the processes in their area with high, medium, or low risk. For example, with the control environment risk factor, if the process uh, that we're looking at in rating had controls that were well defined and documented, then the risk rating would be low. If the process had controls established with some policy structure or some ambiguity, then the rating might be medium there. But if the process had fragmented controls or ad hoc, like as you go along, they were kind of made as you go along, then the rating would be high there for that risk factor. So next slide, please. This slide shows an example of what a risk scorecard looks like. For this example, the business key functions, key business functions are listed with a risk rating of high, medium, or low for each of the risk factors. And once this risk scorecard was completed by management and sent back to internal audit, we reviewed the ratings and if we needed to, we would discuss with management. And then the risk assessment team reviewed these scorecards as received and we made our own notations based on our prior experiences or input within that area. <clears throat> next slide, please. So the next steps that in the process um, are listed here and to give a little bit more of an update with these bullet points, we just completed populating the risk ratings for all of the key business functions into Teammate. This is our new auditing software that will also be talked about uh, a little bit more in a little while. And we just received just this afternoon the last risk rating scorecard that we were waiting for. So we'll be able to review this, this final one and update the software accordingly. And we are currently in the process of completing the internal audit adjustment rating column for each of the uh, key business functions uh, and the function risks related to that. The input received from the uh, Board of Ed members and the superintendent risk surveys will also be used as a whole for the areas within the organization identified as high risk. And then next we'll review the outcomes of the whole entity wide risk assessment for the entire organization in teammate and this will help us identify the high risk areas and in turn help us to develop our work plans. Next slide please. This slide shows a portion of the risk assessment uh, piece in and the risk ratings within our new teammate software. The key business processes are listed with the assessed risk ratings for each risk factor and internal audit adjustment in the columns across the top. Um, so the, the the buttons there that you see kind of with the blue dots will move move it along whether it's high, medium or low in the risk ratings. Um, and the green column to the right gives an overall scoring of what what the score is be anywhere between one and five of our scoring method. We plan to present more data within or from the new software once our training is complete and the data is updated with all of the applicable information. But for now, this is a screenshot of what we have in the system for the risk assessment. And that's all for the presentation. If you have any questions. Miss Hen, any questions? Not at this point. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Miss Rowe is now in the meeting or can can speak, Ms. Rowe. At least I thought she was in the meeting. Oh, I'm here. It took a minute okay, to unmute. Great. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. And and I must admit that I did my Board of <laughs> Education survey this morning and I admit it. Uh, uh, Ms. Barr and the and her department extended that twice. Uh, four board members. I I text Miss Barr this morning, and if and I told her that if she informs me on what other board members are missing, I'll send out an email to them and request that they. And it and it took about 12 minutes for me, maybe less than that. And I'll send that out to them and encourage all of the current board members to please submit that so you guys can use that information. Uh, anything else? I would just like to thank you for that, uh, Mr. McMillian. We have only three board members who have replied to the survey, and one of three is yourself. So <clears throat> I really would encourage board members to take advantage of the opportunity to provide their input and feedback. You are identified to us, but your information, names, and so forth will not be identified 
in the risk assessment project. I just want to make sure that if you're concerned about anonymity, it will your your information will be safe with us. But it is a very brief survey and it will be very helpful for us in the completion of the overall risk assessment. So again, I encourage everyone to take advantage of the opportunity to have your voice heard. Thank you. Yeah, and so we're missing with Miss Pastor's resignation. So we have 11 members, so we're missing eight. Is that accurate? That's correct. OK, so then tomorrow you and I can speak and I'll send that out and I'll stay on them till hopefully we get all eight. OK, all right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any other questions on this topic? Or comments? OK, Miss Barr, how do we sit with the reports? Sure. So the next section we have is um, our carryover projects from the previous year. Wanted to call uh, attention to the fact that we did have uh, the FY20 state aid audit corrective action plan as part of our carryover projects. However, this Maryland State Department of Education is currently conducting its audit of BCPS. And once we receive uh, those results, we will assign the risk ratings as appropriate and incorporate that into our future work plan next year uh, work plan. And also that we did issue our final report related to the OLA corrective action plan. As you'll recall, that was issued on February the 17th and we had uh, recommendations, outstanding corrective actions and recommendations that were no longer relevant. And that was presented to, to the committee back in February. The next item that we have is our peer review preparation and red book preparation. And for that update, I'm going to turn that over to Ms. Stevens. Ms. Stevens. Hi, good evening. Uh, so in order to prepare for our peer uh, review, um, we do have to come into compliance with IIA standards that are identified in what they call their red book. So we have been diligently working on updating our um, our uh, process manual and our procedures um, to come into compliance with the Red Book. So we have finished one section of that, which is uh, the, the initial section is called the attribute standards. So we have completed that section of the manual. We are now working on the performance standards. And um, one thing that we uh, just recently did was we scheduled a meeting with the chief auditor of Orange County, Florida schools, which is a little bit larger school system than us. And they have been compliant with Red Book for a number of years. So she was very helpful to us. She answered a lot of our questions as far as um, some of the challenges that they had um, coming into compliance um, with the Red Book. And um, she actually you know, gave us some information about um, some other uh, resources that we could use to that would be helpful for us. So um, we're on our way and I think um, we are still planning on being um, up and running with the Red Book by uh, June 30th, July 1. So. That's and it. if if committee members will recall um, to in order to get a peer review through the um, ALGA Association, you have to participate and complete peer review. So we do have two folks in the office who have volunteered to do that. And actually uh, one individual is going to be scheduled to conduct a peer review in Maricopa County. Uh, it's going to be uh, done remotely, uh, Maricopa County, Arizona. So we're looking forward to that and gaining some some insights there as well. And, and Ms. Barr, I just want to say what a great opportunity to enter, interact across the country with, you know, a different school system and to hear how they're doing things and to look at things via the Red Book. I think that's a great idea. I really do. Thank you. Any questions, board members? Ms. Han? No questions, thank you. Ms. Rowe? No questions. Okay, Ms. Barr, where do we stand? Okay, so now uh, just to let the committee members know, we've, we've held our regularly scheduled meetings throughout the third quarter and also attended relevant pro professional development and making sure that our licenses and certifications remain active. 
We also complete some general office responsibilities and you heard um, us allude to the teammate implementation, which is our new software pro, uh, package. And for that update, I will turn that back over to Ms. Stevens as well. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, so we uh, are in a um, in de development environment right now, and we have pretty much set everything up as we need to. We're going to be doing some intensive training for our champions next week. We have two champions in the office that will be in charge in charge of all of the administrative um, pieces involved with the, the software. Um, but again, we hope to be or we will be up and running um, with a clean start July 1st for this. Um, so some of the um, benefits of having this software are going to be it's cloud based, so we um, will be able to access it through the web. Um, we're going to have integrated analytics, which we have not had in the past. We have a separate analytics software, but it's it's not especially user friendly. So this is a very user friendly analytics um, integration for this package. Uh, we also are going to have automated workflow notifications, which we haven't had in the past. And um, we'll have an ability to um, contact auditees um, directly from the software, have them provide us information and provide us corrective action um, plans and that information will flow uh, directly into the software. So that's going to be uh, an efficiency for us. Um, and we're also going to have more effective issue tracking. Um, so we'll be able to follow up on any um, outstanding issues that we have with auditees um, in a more effect, effect, <clears throat> effective and efficient manner. So, um, so we are well on our way and we every time we get into the software, we just love it. So <laughs> we're very excited to get this thing up and running. So. That's great to hear. Any questions or comments, board members? OK, Ms. Barr. OK, next on our list is the audit follow up section. And for uh, the third quarter, we completed all the test work and held the exit conference for the Board of Ed non salary expenditure review follow up. And the draft report is complete. We had a couple of things to follow up on related to the um, exit conference that we held and that that is done. So we plan to issue that report probably by the end of this week. And we also completed all seven of the school activity fund and procurement card follow ups that were um, required. <clears throat> Next on our list of special audit requests and unplanned audits. We completed the third party billing self monitoring test work related to autism waiver services and transportation services. Uh, we and we also reviewed the testing completed by the Office of Third Party Billing for health related health related services and issued our draft report to them. We also assisted the board with completion of the corrective action plan um, that was submitted to the Office of the Inspector General for Education. We validated the student member of the board voting process and certified the vote count. And we also identified the need to begin one school related and two HR related projects. Um, and that was our special audit request and unplanned audits for quarter three. Any questions board members or comments? I have one question, Mr. McMillian. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, thank you for your assistance with the with certifying the vote count for the student member election. Um, I was curious as to whether any recommendations were made as far as that process regarding imp improvements. I know that that wasn't um, requested, but were were any recommendations made or were any observations made um, that led to recommendations about potential process improvements? We did actually uh, make a suggestion to refine uh, some of the, the existing standard operating procedures, the SOPs that were in place, but very, very minor adjustments to the, the process. It was a very, um, to me, a very refined process already in place, and the controls were uh, operating as intended. 
so we didn't find any issues with the controls. And again, they were just some minor, minor suggestions to the SOPs to refine those. OK, so those SOPs are documented then, so you had those to review against. We have procedures or they had we didn't have procedures. They had procedures um, written down. Yes, they did. OK, so the lack of control or lack of access control to the voting itself was not a concern. Can you repeat that? I'm not sure what, what sure. you're was because the, the controls in place over the voting process were adequate and they were operating effectively so that if a vote was made in error or by somebody that was ineligible, the process that they had in place caught that so that no ineligible votes were counted. Is that your question? It is. So okay. I'll, I'll give a concrete example. So the fact that 65 teachers voted was not a concern. Their votes were not counted. I can't answer if it was a concern or not, but they're, they were determined to be ineligible and their votes were not counted toward, you know, the final result. OK, so it was not a concern that they were able to vote it because they were not counted. In the end results. Well, I don't think that's a question for for our office to answer. We we validated the actual results. The, the okay. results, the votes that were counted were eligible votes and the ineligible votes were discounted as part of the process. The controls that were in place identified those votes that were ineligible, so they were not counted. Sure, and if it was out, and I understand that it was likely outside the scope of what you were asked to look it, at. It, it was. I mean, that sure. that was, um, Ms. Han, actually uh, a suggestion that was made that perhaps our office would routinely look at that process and certify and validate now that we um, basically know how the process works. It wouldn't really take us too much time to, to do that. So that was a, a suggestion or recommendation that we offered as well. OK, and would it be possible for the board to receive a copy of the, the final recommendations? I, I assume those went to the superintendent. That was all done verbally, um, Ms. Hen, but that I can do that very quickly. Yes. OK, Thank again, you. it was very minor and and I don't know, Miss Stevens, do you recall maybe it was three or four suggestions? Yeah, nothing more than that. Yeah. OK, but the, yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. That, that can be submitted to you all as well. That would be great. We we formed an ad hoc committee to look at this, so um, oh, okay. that would be helpful if we could get um, your team's recommendations that were provided um, to share with the full board, but certainly the ad hoc would appreciate that as a, a starting point for their work. OK, no problem. Great. Thank you. That's all I had. You're welcome. Miss Barr, will you briefly talk about the how the level of cooperation from the, the, was very high as you looked at this? Certainly, so <clears throat> um, responses were immediate to our request for uh, meetings to our requests for information to our requests to review documentation. Uh, very, very, very high level of cooperation from the folks in um, uh, the Office of Family and Community Engagement with the folks in IT as, as applicable. Um, it was it was they were just very, very highly cooperative. The data <clears throat> itself was readily and immediately available. Um, so that was greatly appreciated as well. And uh, I don't know if, if everybody knows, but we actually then in our office um, conducted a, a mock voting process that was just done in our office to even further test the controls that were being used um, through the Google form process. So, um, and any questions that we had, like I said, they were answered immediately. 
there was there was no hesitation. Um, just very, very went very smoothly and very much appreciated. And that's kind of how we like it whenever we go out to do an audit. You know, it just makes things go much more quickly. So they had everything readily available. Everything was organized and anything that we asked for, we received immediately. I personally so, think that's outstanding myself. It is. And actually, it's kind of highly unusual. <laughs> so it, it it really was um, very pleasant. Very pleasant to have all that in place. Miss Rowe, any comments or questions? No, I have no questions. Just to thank Miss Barr for getting that together. Great. You're Ms. welcome. Miss Barr, anything else? Yes, sir. So um, we had the FY21 overtime payments, and you'll recall that that objective had to be um, altered just a little bit, but that test work was completed in quarter three. We began preliminary discussions with management regarding our potential findings, and the draft report is in progress. As a matter of fact, um, we're meeting this week to finalize the report, so that hopefully will go out sometime um, next week. For the, our contract review, we combined projects 15 and 18, excuse me, related to our third party administrator contracts. All that test work is completed and the draft report is written and is under technical review as we speak. Um, we did a lot with the student data and enrollment attendance project. And for that, I'm going to turn that over to Ms. Stevens to just give a brief um, overview of what we did there and the understanding that we received completing that project. Another project I, I might add and must add with the greatest um, level of cooperation and availability of IT staff and student data information. So Ms. Stevens. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so what we, our goal for this project was to verify the accuracy of uh, student data as it came over from our old SIS system, which was BCPS1, um, into our new um, student information system, which is FOCUS. So we uh, looked at three different areas. We looked at um, demographics, um, data points related to enrollment. Uh, I believe it was nine or ten different data points that we looked at. We looked at student grades and we looked at student attendance. Um, we chose a sample of 60 students, 30 secondary and 30 elementary, and we um, requested information from the old um, SIS system and then compared it to what is in focus now. Um, overall, we had very, very favorable results. We have a few little anomalies that we are still working with staff on to kind of determine um, why we're not um, seeing um, what we're what we expect to see. So uh, I think once we get that wrapped up, um, figure out what happened with those few little things, um, we are going to have a report written and it's going to be very favorable. So um, and as Bar Andrew Barr said, um, we really did have uh, wonderful cooperation. Focus, it was a new software for us. Um, Jocelyn Lear was um, wonderful in getting us up and running with the training for that so that we knew where we needed to look to uh, to find certain um, information that we were that we needed. So um, we applaud them and thank them for their cooperation. So. Any questions board members or comments? Hearing none, Ms. Barr, anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, next in our plan is the our IT security project and uh, we're looking at the controls <coughs> there related to uh, security. We have completed preliminary planning with that. We held the entrance conference with appropriate levels of management, sent the um, questionnaire out. So we'll be uh, working ahead uh, on that project the rest of this month into next month, and this will definitely be completed in the fourth quarter. And next is our uh, payroll project. And again, we're looking at controls over payroll. Now we had to um, modify the actual uh, areas in payroll that we were looking at 
to review the payrolls that are manually processed. So that's what we're going to be looking at in um, quarter four. But we did do preliminary project planning. We held the entrance conference with appropriate levels of management, and we are also moving ahead with that project as well. With respect to um, records management, ma excuse me, records management, we did move that project up into um, the third quarter, but we just had uh, completed preliminary project planning, but we are meeting this week with appropriate levels of management to get that project moving ahead for uh, quarter four. And also next is the grant, administra grant administration project. We did move that up from um, uh, FY23, and we have completed the preliminary project planning, held our entrance conference, and we did modify um, the objective a little bit just to make sure that the controls we're testing are not controls covered in a single audit that is completed by the external auditors. If you'll recall, we don't want to duplicate efforts, but we're looking at the controls in um, the grants accounting area, and that's an area that I have to say they really have some pretty strong uh, controls in place according to their SOPs and manuals that they have developed. <clears throat> and that's it for the projects that were open in quarter three. I I'm ready now to start into planned activities not yet started. We did have um, the benefits eligibility and what we've determined is that we're going to have to defer that project um, due to continuing recovery and rebuild efforts on the part of uh, HR. So we're going to just incorporate uh, our results in the risk assessment and make that determination as to when and where we will be looking into benefits eligibility. So I wanted to call that to the committee's attention that we will not be doing that project in FY22, um, which leaves us with just one project in quarter four and that, that to be started in quarter four, which is the uh, leave balances and we'll be looking at the processes used to reestablish employee leave balances and, and verify the accuracy of post ransomware data. So that does um, conclude our report of our quarter three activities, including the fraud uh, hotline report, and we are open to any more questions or comments from the committee. And thank you for your time. Committee members, any comments or questions for Ms. Barr and her staff? OK, uh, item four announcements. The next meeting of the audit committee will be on Tuesday, May 10th, 2022 at 4.30 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you.